Okay, so um, in the previous video, we saw that um, the gravitational intensity falls off um, by this factor, 1 over r squared. So, if we've got Earth, right, that is the radius of Earth, and at that radius, we have a certain gravitational attraction G, right? And at, say, 2RE, we will have, uh, at that radius of 2 times the radius of Earth, we will have basically 1 over 2 squared times G at the radius 3 times the radius of Earth, we're going to have 1 over 3 squared times G, so that in the intensity is dropping off by 1 over R squared. Okay? And the same as we just saw, if you've got the Moon over here, or any object that is at 60 times the radius of Earth, then gravity will drop off by 1 over 60 squared 1 over 60 squared times G right okay so we've got this intensity at a certain radius and the radius uh, sorry the intensity drops off as we see so Make sure you go back and you understand this diagram. You've got a certain intensity at, at a radius. That's the intensity. Here we have a light intensity. And as you increase the radius, the intensity drops off by 1 over r squared. Okay. And the other thing that we saw is that the assumption is that all of the material is concentrated at the center of the sphere. Right? So the radius is from the center of the sphere to that surface. All right. Okay. Now, now further evidence, further evidence of this one over r squared. Um, we know that. Um, so if a if an object has a a celestial body has a certain radius and a period t. Right, so the period is just simply the object traveling right around the sun one full revolution. That is the period. Okay. Um, then we know that because it has centripetal acceleration, which is in that direction and it's equal to V squared over R, right? That is a centripetal acceleration. And this velocity is equal to 2 pi r over t. 2 pi r is simply the circumference. It's that total distance that you travel to complete one uh, revolution. Divided by uh, t, which is the, 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 the time to go around one revolution. So t is that is the period. So that is the velocity. That is your, that is your v. Okay, so if we take this guy and plug it into there, we get this. A is 4 pi squared r over t squared. But this is the key. Your acceleration, your centripetal acceleration is proportional to r over t squared. Okay, and we've also seen our assumption and even um, our, some of our measurements have seen that we just saw this, that A is proportional to 1 over R squared. Okay? We've just spoken about that. Now, if you put these two together, right? Uh, A, C is proportional to R over T squared. And it's proportional, proportional to 1 over R squared. And we rearrange this we'll see that t cubed is proportional to r no no t squared is proportional to r cubed 
And this is what we see over here. T squared is proportional to R cubed. What does that mean? It means the square of the period of a planetary orbit is proportional to the cube of its radius. So, say so now an object is traveling around the sun. It has a certain period, right? Certain period. The square of that period is proportional to that radius cubed. Okay? And this we see here with actual measurements in figure 13.5. Um, so T squared is proportional to R cubed. So let's have a look here. Let's do some examples. Uh, let's say uh, we're looking at Saturn that is approximately 10 Earth radii from the Sun. Okay. And so if we say, so that's R. R equals 10 Earth radii. And we would like to see what is t. Now we know that t squared is proportional to r cubed. So let's see what is um, what is r to the three over two. What is r to the three over two? Ten to the power of three over two gives us That. So put that into your calculator and you'll see that it's approximately approximately 31 years. Okay? So our the period is approximately 31 years if the radius is 10. Similarly try it for a hundred and one thousand. Okay? Alright, see you there.